tonight we have uh, the first CMT Connect webinar of 2021. Uh, I hope everyone's staying safe and uh, your year is off to uh, a good start. Um, and we wanted to also start 2021 on the right foot, uh, so to speak, with, um, with some great nutrition tips from um, Paul Fowler, who is a national board certified functional medicine health coach. <laughs> Did I get that right, Paul? You got it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Paul. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to share your incredible story and also your experience and uh, expertise in this area with CMT, uh, with the CMT community. And one of the main reasons why um, we're doing this pain series is because it's a very underrecognized uh, aspect of living with CMT. Um, and we know there are a lot of patients that are very frustrated and um, not all of us um, are keen on, on medications or uh, over-the-counter drugs. So we really wanna do as much as we can um, naturally um, to kind of combat pain as one of the symptoms of CMT. And um, so if anyone has any questions, just some quick housekeeping. If you have any questions tonight, feel free to enter them in the uh, Q&A box and uh, we will do our best to answer them. If we are not able to answer them, feel free to reach out to Paul directly. Um, I've included his both of his websites in the, uh, the chat window. So feel free to take that information and reach out to him uh, individually if you have additional questions. So without further ado, welcome Paul. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks Estella. And thanks everybody for, uh, for coming and uh... I look forward to sharing you, sharing with you my adventure in CMT. So the first half an hour, we're going to talk about just how, just my experience. Um, and I got diagnosed about three years ago. So I'm a late onset person. I'm 56 years old. So, um, but it totally radically transformed my life. And so I just kind of want to share that story. And then afterwards we can talk about nutrition, some of my favorite subjects, nutrition and sleep and all, and stress and all the things that um, are a part of living healthily or living not so healthily. So um, yeah, I look forward to it. All right, so let's start with your story. We have, a, I know we have a slideshow here. So, um, so I'm from Chicago. I live in Chicago right now. It's uh, there's a beautiful snowstorm happening again. So for those of you that don't have snow, um, it was quite beautiful today, I must say. Uh, so I was in Chicago. I've been in Chicago my whole life. Uh, I was a middle school teacher in the '90s. I went to Thailand in '99, just totally random. I I just uh, felt like I had been teaching seven years, and I just had enough. And uh, I literally spun the globe and went to the exact opposite side of the globe that I could get away from my students. Not that I didn't love them, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Uh, it was a lot. I was a middle school teacher. Um, so for those of you that know middle school, mm -hmm. remember middle school, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. So, uh, so I went to Thailand. I kind of randomly stumbled across this physical therapy practice of Thai massage. I did I'd never meditated before and suddenly I took a 10 day silent meditation retreat. So I went, talk about jumping in the deep end. Uh, it was insane. Um, but both of those experiences of, of uh, learning Thai massage or at least starting to learn Thai massage and starting to meditate um, really opened my eyes to a whole nother world including the, the Buddhist world of Thailand. Um, so um, I went home and instead of going back to uh, teaching, I decided to uh, continue to practice Thai massage. And so, uh, and then I started a school, yearly trips to Thailand, et cetera, et cetera, life's good. And then in 2018, there we go, um, or 2016, I'm sorry, 2016, I, uh, yeah, I just started getting some weird feelings in my toes, like there was cotton balls in between my toes, felt really weird. Um, and then 
a little bit later, I had like strange like uh, tingling sensations at my right leg, kind of weakness, um, harder to lift my foot when walking, pain in my feet. Uh, that stuff started happening and I got a little bit concerned. So, oops. So I went to a, a neurologist and I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of you guys or some of you guys, at least late onset people have had this thing where, you know, you're just not really listened to, especially at first. Um, so I went to neurologist, he scraped my foot, says, can you feel this? He says, you're fine. You know, <laughs> you don't have MS. Okay, great. So I'm like, I know there's something wrong. And then three doctors later, problems getting worse. I, I went to Thailand. The doctor said, oh, you just have high arches. They said, I, the doc, or, so I went to a doctor. He did that kind of very barbaric test where they stick the needle in you and they wiggle it around and, and they like, He's like, oh, you have CMT. And I was like, okay, I don't know what that is, but I'm glad we finally found out something. And then, all right. So I, then I, I looked it up online, freaked out, saw that it was just gonna get worse. I started looking at all of the um, you know, videos and things like that. Um, and I became really terrified, like I said, in, in um, and I just saw the worst case scenario and uh, I really broke down. Um, like I said, like I, my, I, like I literally couldn't lift the spoon to my mouth. I was freaked out. And then, uh, you know, I started talking to some people. I wrote to somebody that I saw on YouTube. She was cool. She said, you know, she was like, it's okay, you're gonna make it. Uh, I had a friend that knew a friend that had CMT and she told me about Dr. Shai, who some of you probably know, uh, who's a, uh, you know, one of the you know, most well-known CMT specialists. Uh, and I got an appointment with him right away. And then, you know, I just started like connecting. My parents were incredibly helpful. My uh, family, friends, doctor, naturopath, chi, Tai Chi teacher, you know, all these people started, uh, became, started becoming my support system. And then uh, I was taking my Tai Chi class and there was this yoga teacher says, hey, you should check out uh, Dr. Terry Walls. And she, um, so, I, so I went and looked at, uh, I got online, checked out her TED talk and, um, and it really changed my life because this was a person who had progressive type two MS. She was in a reclining wheelchair in incredible pain. Like she would have nerve pain in her face that was so excruciating and it lasted for days where she like literally was almost screaming. And, and it, was, it was just really intense. And she went to Cleveland Clinic. She got all the best care in the world. Uh, you know, she was a doctor already, right? So, and she just kept getting worse and worse. So there she is in 2007, uh, October 1st, and then a year later, you can see what happened. Now, what happened? She just, after she was getting worse and worse, she decided to look into nutrition and see how she could feed her body and the things they need to, to help her, the myelin uh, around her nerves to help her immune system fight to do all these things. And she realized she would go into study after study after study, really did the research and started seeing how, how medicine was food and food was medicine, right? This is a very fundamental idea, especially in the functional medicine. This, and she started, she actually moved into the function. She started taking classes at the Institute of Functional Medicine. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about what functional medicine is, but, but essentially it recognizes that what we feed our body, what we put in our body three times a day has an incredible effect on the systems of the body and whether they work well or whether they don't work well. And so she started, first she started with a bunch of supplements and pills and she got a little bit better. And then she started eating all the nutrition that she could and completely transformed her body. And a, a year later, she's riding her bike. And then two years later, she's, um, you know, working through uh, 
uh, you know, riding her horseback through the mountains and stuff like that. And now you would look at her, you wouldn't even know she has MS, right? It's incredible. Uh, now, MS isn't CMT, right? So there's a difference. And I understand that. But what I'm saying is what I, what I, the, she was a mentor. She like, she like helped me to realize that there was, that I had some power, potentially I had some power over the situation and that I wasn't going to be just uh, a victim of my disease or a victim of a certain kind of mindset. So anyways, that was really important for me to find that mentor, find that person. And she was the person when I got down, I would think she did it. I can do it. You know, she was in much worse shape than I am. I can, I can do it if she did it. So anyways, and next. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I got her book, you know, and I started learning about uh, food and what it could do. And I completely radically transformed my diet. I mean, I was already eating fairly healthy, but so here's the thing, isn't CM, CMT isn't autoimmune, right? There, there might, there, there, they've, you know, I've heard doctors say that there might be some aspects of autoimmunity within CMT. So uh, you guys would know more of that than I would, but, um, but from a functional medicine perspective, uh, almost all chronic diseases care for, uh, share four commonalities. Mitochondrial dysfunction, in other words, the energy system of our body is not working well, right? Um, excessive and inappropriate inflammation, so there's inflammation in our, in our joints, there's inflammation in, throughout the body, inflammation in our brain, like uh, inflammation in our, our nervous system and in, in the nerves, like inflammation is a huge driver of pain and disease. Um, high cortisol levels, so you know, stress that is consistent and doesn't, uh, yeah, Wall's protocol, exactly. Um, and absence of insufficient health promoting microbes living in and on us, in other words, our microbiome. Yeah, so just feeling like I was, I had power, you know, um, and purpose. So, okay, so this actually goes to Estella's um, TED talk that I first or saw her. And if you haven't had a chance to see that, you should see it because it's really amazing. And, but it, the idea um, is that I started realizing that I could transform this condition through my experience to help others. So I wasn't even just doing it for myself. I was actually doing it. I, I felt like I had the opportunity in a certain way to do something special that others could uh, see and therefore um, possibly uh, help to overcome as well, whatever it is that they're facing. So, okay. So I decided to become a health coach. Plus I didn't even know if I was gonna be able to do Thai massage anymore, you know? So uh, I was like, I gotta do something where I'm sitting in a chair or something like that. I can't be moved, might not be able to move my body around. I don't know what's gonna happen. You know, there's a lot of unknowns. So I went and studied to become a health coach at the Institute or the Functional Medicine uh, Coaching Academy. Okay, so when we talk about the food situation, the first thing that what Terry talks about requires is a real strong commitment to eat in the absolute best way for 100 days and then doing that and seeing what happens. It's, it's, it's an experiment. Mm -hmm. I like to see these things as experiments. In other words, where I am just testing to see what works and I'll put a certain time limit on it and I'll just do it for a while and then I'll go, okay, better, worse, same, let's see. And then I can switch it and change it. The problem with sometimes, and what I used to do too, is like, I would try to embark on something thinking I was gonna be doing it for life. And then I would inevitably fall off the wagon because I wouldn't be able to keep my energy up, my motivation. It would just flag at some point and then I'd give up and that. But when I had a specific goal, hundred days, 100%, I was like, bring it on, I can do this. And so that's what I did. Um, and so what is the program? It's, it's actually quite simple, all right? So we can get in, you know, 
some people like to talk about all the details like this food's good for this and that food's good for that and da 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 and that's true that may be true but really when it comes right down to it eat good stuff don't eat bad stuff <laughs> and improve the quality of the food that you eat so in other words here's how it goes for those of you that know michael pollan or have read michael pollan um he wrote a book called in defense of food in defense of food which is funny the food would need defending but <laughs> these days it kind of does and so he has this very famous oh i think i actually have it in here um and it basically says uh eat food not too much mostly plants and and that requires a little picking apart because just eat food so what does food mean food does not mean a box that's got uh, 20 ingredients in it you know, a box of something that's got 20 ingredients in it. That is not, it depends on your definition, but by this definition, it is not food, right? Food is um, um, something that you, so basically you, you shop in the outer edges of the grocery store, right? You, 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 you shop in the vegetable aisle and you, you shop in the, you know, you go to the fish counter, whatever. So you, and the inside of the grocery store with all the packaged food and all the other stuff, you avoid it. And this, this is, it's actually, it's, it's almost as simple as that. Yeah. Right? That's true. Um, okay, so next one. Oh, there it is, yeah, okay. Eat food, not too much, mostly vegetables, right? And so had to literally went into my cabinets and threw out food that I was just like, this is not, this doesn't fit mm -hmm. and it's not helpful. And so I wanted to feed my body only things that were going to help and to reduce the inflammation, to help the myelin, to help the gut, you know, to do all these things that I, you know, eating donuts is, wasn't going to do it. I understood that. Right. So yeah, got rid of that. All right. Um, when we get into like Wall's protocol, and by the way, I'm not necessarily suggesting Wall's protocol. It's just this is just what I used, and there's there's many people out there that have, but but it's all basically it's pretty similar when you get right down to it. When you mm -hmm. see different people's take on this for a really radical transformation in the body, these are the things that that are pretty close to it. One, lots of fruit and veggies. Like who's going to argue with that? Right. Um, so, and we say nine now, nine cups now. Jesus, Jesus, like, you know, nine to 12 cups of fruit and veggies, which seems like a lot. Yeah, it is, you know, um, and, and more veggies than fruit. So the fruits are kind of specific in the low sugar variety. So the blueberries, the raspberries, the blackberries, those sorts of things. That could be all thrown in like one smoothie, basically, you know. Well, that's it. Yeah, that's a powerful. You know, you're not looking at this like big mound of fruit and vegetables. It's exactly. Salad. No, one smoothie in the morning could be like four cups of vegetables mm -hmm. and fruits or five cups even, you know, like really, uh, you can really do it. Um, all right, getting rid of all gluten, dairy, and added sugar. So that's, uh, you know, all those things have the, um, uh, you know, they, you know, even though you might not be, you might not have celiac disease, you know, but gluten, people are sensitive to gluten. It is, it affects the gut lining, especially gluten that comes from the United States. Um, and because of the varieties, the particular varieties that are grown here, they're just, they just tend to be very high in gluten and the body oftentimes has a hard time uh, dealing with it. So getting rid of that stuff. And then organic grass-fed wild caught. So organic vegetables, grass-fed meats, uh, grass-fed, grass-finished, uh, wild-caught fish, um, or some, I also do like sardines or, uh, you know, little cans of mackerel or sardines, something like that. <clears throat> so let's break down the veggies. All right, so three categories, three cups each per day. So, and this is, you know, random, I just kind of guessed this, but, um, Leafy greens, I make sure I get leafy greens like spinach or collards or chard, things like that. Um, colored fruits and vegetables, you know, of course the various berries is great for different colors. Um, and by the way, all these things do 
you know, different things in the body. Um, and they all have hundreds of phyto, phytonutrients, phytochemicals, many of which they haven't even identified yet or don't even know what they do. But the more and more that they learn about what they do, they're, it's not just this vitamin or that vitamin. It's all these molecules in the food that actually come together to, um, to support the body. It's what we evolved to eat and it's how our bodies evolved to grow. And when we take that out of the diet by eating so much processed food, then we, we start to run into problems. And then sulfur rich foods, right. Which foods are sulfur rich? Good question. So um, all of your cruciferous vegetables. So uh, your cabbage, like cabbage family kind of foods. The ones that like when you cook them, they kind of have that distinct sulfur smell, right? Yeah. So broccoli, um, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower. These are your sulfur rich vegetables and they're incredibly um, important and anti-carcinogenic actually as well. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, and so a lot of people think, well, oh my God, I got to get rid of this gluten and the sugar and da, da, da. that's going to, and processed foods, it's going to be so limiting. It's going to be, uh, what am I going to eat? And, and what I found personally was that once I decided to eat in this particular way, that it actually opened up this whole world of things. Cause I'm like, oh, I'm gonna try rutabaga. I've never had a rutabaga, you know? <laughs> or I'm gonna eat these turnips or I'm gonna eat these radishes or I'm gonna try that, you know? And so I just started trying all kinds of different things. And then I started thinking about cooking them and like, how do I, how do I make them? So it's, and so actually for me, like before my diet was much more limited, right? Because maybe one day I would eat sushi and the next day I would have pizza and the next day I would have whatever, you know? So it's like, well, not that interesting actually, but now my diet actually became much more varied, much more interesting. I, you can see somebody there making um, like a fermented, like a sauerkraut or something like that. Like I made some fermented uh, foods like sauerkraut and kimchi. Um, so yeah, so I started having fun. With, with food a little bit more. You know, going shopping at farmer's markets, uh, getting my meat from, uh, you know, local farms that raised animals in humane ways. And, and, uh, and you know, again, not eating factory farmed meat. That's really actually quite, I mean, there's so much, so many, you know, antibiotics and hormones and, and, mm -hmm. And, and the omega-3, omega-6 balance creates like an inflammatory uh, issues, but, but farm uh, grass-fed, grass-finished grass beef and other, I mean, again, you don't have to eat beef, but if you do and you can get grass-fed beef, it is, it is definitely, it's a totally different animal, so to speak. And what about dairy? Because it's kind of like in the same ballpark as far as, far as like, hormones and, and things that are added to the dairy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, like I try to avoid the dairy, but like um, yogurt and things like that can be really good because they, again, have that, or kefir, have their fermented mm -hmm. um, gut building um, bacteria. So yeah. Can you get those same benefits from like, let's say like coconut milk, yogurt, or almond yogurt? If they're fermented, yes. Okay. You get, there's, there's fermented coconut milk, there's fermented right. almond milk. Yeah, because that's what I, I, I have yogurt, but it's all the coconut milk based. And it's really good. I mean, yeah, add some nuts and stuff in there and let's get a little snack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So cooking, I, I started cooking all my meals. I, I literally didn't go out to eat. And this was, you know, I mean, this pre-COVID. <laughs> this is not easy, especially living in Chicago and having all these great restaurants around. But you know what? I was focused, and I was like, okay, I'm doing this. So for me, it wasn't that hard. Um, it's possible to go out to eat uh, and eat in these particular ways. It's a little harder. You have to be a little more picky, um, and you know, but can, can be done. But I just started cooking a lot, and. Uh, that was really fun too, actually. It was enjoyable. I had a lot of friends over for meals and things like that, you know. Was there a particular like place that you found your recipes or? YouTube. YouTube, yeah. I'm, I'm like a huge fan of, go, of going onto YouTube and, uh, and 
and looking like I find an ingredient, like let's say I bring a whole, an ingredient home from the store and I go to YouTube and I go recipe for whatever ingredient, kohlrabi recipe, you know, mm -hmm. and then, uh, and then I see what they do and I just check it out. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. So obviously food's not the only thing that's, that's fundamental. Um, but, uh, Exercise and movement, obviously really important, especially for the detoxification systems of the body to start getting stuff out. Um, so sweating and that sort of thing. Um, meditation to, for me personally, uh, you know, meditation is not for everybody for sure. Uh, sometimes just a nice walk is very meditative, right? It's not just necessarily about just sitting, um, but for people that gravitate towards it, it can be nice to relieve stress that way. Um, I used various breath exercises, especially when I get stressed, um, you know, like various, you know, counting breath and things like that. Um, self massage, um, you know, do, did uh, I do, fa I still do every day, face massage, different, different uh, kinds of uh, oils I'll put on my body. So, you know, uh, those are all, especially my toes and feet and, and legs, uh, I'll, I have a particular oil that my teacher made for me. So then I use that. Nice. Um, okay. So for me, after three weeks, I noticed a lessening of the nerve pain, which had actually gone into my hands. Uh, so it wasn't just in my feet anymore. It was in my hands, arms, forearms. And uh, so at, after about three weeks or so of, of doing this, there was a lessening of pain. After about uh, two months, nerve pain had completely gone away. A sense of uh, fine motor dysfunction in my hands and fingers was pretty much gone. I was like, feel, like it was hard for me, harder for me to grab things. Um, and then that started going away. Um, I had more energy, more clear in my head. Um, the numbness was still there, weakness a little bit in my right leg uh, was still there. So I knew I, you know, hadn't overcome the whole thing, but yeah. And what, can I ask what your like pain level was before you started this on like a scale of one to 10? Oh, well, it depends. Uh, it was really day to day. And some days I would wake up and it would be, you know, you know, fairly high, maybe like a six or a seven or something like that. And then, uh, and then some days I would just like, it would just be like a mild discomfort, like a two or three, maybe. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, after uh, quick changes, I pretty much plateaued. The next five months, uh, didn't notice any big changes, but the pain stayed away. That was good enough for me. I got used to some of the numbness, didn't think about it too much. Uh, I literally decided to not think of myself as having CMT. Um, and then I decided to experiment and I went to Italy to visit a friend and I just went crazy. I was like- <laughs> It's hard not to. <laughs> screw it, man. I am eating you know, gelato and- yeah pasta and pizza and wine. And I was just going crazy. I was having a great time and no regrets, you know? And but then two weeks later, like my body was like on fire and my hands, my feet, it was so intense. Mm. Um, and, but it was really an, a, it was a lesson. It was like, I was like, oh. It okay. is working, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes when you're doing something, you don't, you forget or you don't even know if it's, you're kind of wondering if it's really doing anything. And it's good to experiment and check and see, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, lesson learned. Back on the wagon. <laughs> um, okay, so, so takeaways. Uh, and by the way, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm still like eating really healthy, you know, I'm doing all the things that I, I need to do right now. And uh, so I'm still doing it. And it's, it's just become a lifestyle for me. So it doesn't really, it's not particularly difficult at this, at this point, just like any habit, right? Once you create that habit, it's not, it's not too bad. Um, so, so a few takeaways I just want to share with you real quick. Um, so finding the silver lining of condition, whatever you're dealing with, letting go of victim mentality, um, you know, not easy, obviously, and, and don't expect you can do it all the time or whatever. It's, uh, but perhaps every once in a while, you can see positive things that come out of this. It's just like COVID, you know, like what, you know, it's been rough for, for so many people 
but if you look at your life, you might find things within that that actually are positive and that you've grown in certain ways, okay? Um, so doctors won't save you, you must save yourself. Okay, so this is really a fundamental shift. So much of us are dependent upon the doctors and expect the doctors know and we don't know and we just kind of do what they say. And, and, and in this particular condition, they don't really know that much. So, and they can't really help us that much. Um, so um, it's really incumbent upon us to like take the reins. Um, don't buy into the progressive paradigm that everything has to always progress because maybe it will, maybe it won't, we don't know. Um, Know that others are watching. And what I mean by that is like the people around you, the kids, you know, uh, uh, people that are looking to you, like, you know, remember that how you handle this is impactful with, for other people and it can really help them um, to see how, you know, you, we always see these movies about people that overcome these really difficult things. And we were like, oh, it feels so good. Cause it's like, and, you know, that's a possibility. We can choose to do that if we, if we choose to do that. Um, and you don't have to choose to do that either. So it's okay too. Um, so uh, use difficulty to identify your purpose. This is, you know, kind of the, the nature of Estella's talk. Um, find a role model or teacher like I found Terry Walls and I found a lot of other people along the way that I, I look to when I struggle or when I need just to see someone else that has done it. There's a woman that actually Stella uh, connected me to named Kim Goodsell, who is just amazing human being with CMT that's really overcome so much. She's got, if you go on YouTube, you can find her. And she did a really great talk, uh, very inspiring. She is another person that I look to and inspires me to keep moving forward and, and do better. Um, study and learn until you're convinced, you know, the more you understand, the more you learn, the more you'll be certain about what to do and what you're doing and that you won't, like doubt is such a killer, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and doubt will just slow you down so much. So you gotta just, if you have doubts, then you just kind of keep looking into stuff, keep looking into stuff and find the answers. Yeah. And I'd like, I'd love to add to you, there's a, a great documentary on Netflix called The Magic Pill. Yes. Um, if anyone's looking for some additional inspiration and just some great examples of the power of nutrition, it's a great, it's a great documentary. I, I highly recommend it. Magic Pill is great. I love that. It's very inspiring. Um, and uh, okay, takeaways too. Uh, believe in your power and ability to change. Like nothing stays the same. This is fundamental. This is Buddhism 101, right? Mm -hmm. Everything's changing. Nothing is stable. Everything's changing all the time. So you can change. Things can change. Your condition can change. Your pain level can change. It does moment by moment, day by day, by day already if you look into it. You know? Um, know that change requires commitment. Commitment requires belief. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's, it does, it does require energy for sure. Um, you may not cure your, may or may not cure your CMT symptoms, but you may be able to reduce your pain, increase your energy, lessen your brain fog, lessen your dependence on meds, prevent other comorbidities that compromise your health. I mean, um, this is front and center right now with COVID mm -hmm. especially, right? right. Um, mistakes and false starts and falling off the wagon are part of it. So just because you do doesn't, you know, you just get up and keep going. Um, and then getting support from family and friends, having a community around you, getting them on board, you know, helping them share with what you're going through or what your challenge is, you know, keep talking, just talk. It's really important. Um, so, you know, in the Buddhist practice, there's a fundamental difference between the Western way of seeing things in the, in the Eastern way or the Buddhist in other words, people get sick, people get old, people die. Suffering is part of the human condition. It cannot be any other way. It's like, it is, it is the nature of having a human body. You know, what's the cause of death? And my teacher will say, well, the cause of death is being born. <laughs> so, you know, like everyone's gonna die and we don't know how, but you know, 
it's, it's just part of what it's part of the bargain of having a body. So, um, and, uh, and sickness as much as having a body is health. Like they're, they're part of the, the, you know, the journey that we're on and everybody's going to kind of have both of those things, hopefully. Uh, try to flow with it, relax around it, love yourself and your body as it is incredibly resilient. It's gotten you this far. And last thing, I'll just finish with this. Um, there's this story about good luck, bad luck. You may or may not have heard it, but I'll tell you. There's, uh, there was a man, uh, he had, a, he had, a, he had uh, some horses and lived out in the countryside and one of the horses escaped. And, and all his friends came by and said, oh, that's such bad luck, your horse escaped. And then all of a sudden, a few days later, his horse comes back, dragging with it a bunch of female horses that were in tow. So all of a sudden he's got a bunch more horses and his, all his friends come by and say, oh, that's such good luck. And he says, oh, good luck, bad luck, who knows? And then his son is training one of the horses that's the wild horse is trying to break in the horse and his son gets thrown off the horse, breaks his leg and, and all the neighbors come by and say, oh, that's such bad luck, your son broke his leg. And he says, oh, good luck, bad luck, who knows? And then the, the army is coming by to conscript, conscript all of the you know, able-bodied young men to fight in the, 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 the local war. <laughs> and they, they pass by his house because you know, his son's got a broken leg and all his neighbors come over and say, oh, that's such good luck. He's like, <laughs> good luck, bad luck, who knows, right? So this is the thing here is, you know, good luck, bad luck, who knows, yeah. I love that. <laughs> Good life lesson. Yeah. So I, I love your story. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's been inspired by it so far. Um, and I know we had some questions come in, so I'd love to leave some time for, for us to get around to those. So I'm gonna pull a few of those up. Um, so the first one we have is uh, I have CMT for 17 years. I have been on a multitude of medications. I did notice that when I eat too much sugar and not so good foods that the neuropathy pressure and pain increase in my legs. What are the things to avoid besides uh, sugar, fructose syrup? Uh, my blood sugar has been fine all along. Thank you, Scotty from Allentown, Pennsylvania. All right, Scotty. Um, well, first of all, I wanna, I wanna say this, is that you have, because you have noticed, you, you did some experiment, you quit eating the sugar, you found that the pain lessened when you did that. Like just that idea of experimenting on your body to see what works and what doesn't is really like, that's fundamental. Um, and to have the kind of curiosity and to kind of develop those sorts of skills, you can say, to try things see what works, see what doesn't work. So, and so I would say, number one, keep experimenting, right? Mm -hmm. Keep trying. Like if you get a sense that a certain kind of food is causing problems, maybe you get a little stomach ache when you eat it, or you just feel a little lethargic after you eat a meal that happens to have dairy in it. Well, so cut out the dairy for a while, you know, for two weeks, four weeks, see how, and then reintroduce it and see what happens. So, there is this idea of like an elimination diet. Right. That's one way you can go where you literally, now this is a more hardcore way of doing it where you eliminate uh, a lot of the most common sensitive foods that people are sensitive to. And then you start, uh, you get rid of them for say a month. Um, and then you start adding them back in one by one and you start seeing how your body reacts to that. Um, so sometimes people go on an elimination diet and are shocked at how much uh, less pain they're in or how much less they have headaches or, or whatever sort of thing. Um, so so it's, hard, it's hard for me to say exactly what you can do. Um, there are definitely certain things like sugar which cause inflammation in the body, I would say, try maybe, uh, you know, getting rid of gluten for a while and seeing if that makes a difference, because that oftentimes creates inflammation in the body, which creates, which, which leads to pain in the body. Right. Um, 
So those are just a few things. And then the, the other, the last thing I'd say is that don't think of it in so much of a, uh, like what you have to get rid of. Like think about what you're gonna add in also. Like you eating things that are high, highly nutrient, like have a high degree of nutrition. So more vegetables and more, um, you know, good quality fats and various things like that. Yeah, and, and sometimes, you know, the word sugar is not, it, there's a lot of different terminologies for the word sugar. So it's good to get educated on, you know, the other code words for sugar, because um, sometimes, you know, that they fly under the radar and um, we think something doesn't have sugar and it's actually loaded with it, which actually brings me to my next question. What about wine? <laughs> Scott R. Uh, had, was asking about that because I know we love our wine. Yeah, well, if you want to numb the pain, man, just drink a bottle of wine. You're good. Yeah. Uh, no, I, you know, again, it's 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 something where number one, okay, it, it depends. <laughs> all all of my answers are gonna be like it depends. Um, it depends on what you want to accomplish in a certain way. Like if you if you want to experiment and and really see and really try a food protocol like the Walls protocol or the Whole30 or some of the other kind of nutrient rich diets that where all the stuff, like if you really are hurting and you wanna get, you wanna find like a way to get out of the pain, then you might wanna go, if everyone's got a pain point, right? So you reach a certain threshold and at some point you're willing to do anything pretty much, right? right. But not a, but people have different thresholds and you might have pain, but not might not be at the pain point where you're willing to do hundred days on the walls protocol, right? But at some point, maybe you would be. So you have to right. decide, are, are you? And if you are, then you're, you're not gonna drink wine, right? But if you feel like, um, you know, you want to uh, experiment with, just taking wine out of your daily life for a while and see how that feels and then bring it back in and see how that feels. Contrast. Then you'll get a sense as to how it's affecting in your body. But you know, um, a glass of wine a day or something like that, especially if it's like organic or something like, you know, it's probably not a problem, but again, you have to kind of like play that little game. Right. Um... Uh, Daniel asked, do you notice any changes in your fascias, less stiffness or less pain? Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and can I tell you exactly what it is that is causing that or why that's happening? I can't, you know, these, these different foods have, again, as I talked about before, they have so many different, like there's, there's a kind of a reductionist way of thinking that's called nutritionism. And nutritionism is like saying, and then Michael Pollan talks about this in his books, where nutritionism is like this idea of like, oh, we're going to make this food and we're going to add some vitamin D and we're going to add some calcium and we're going to add some, and then that's good, right? And so I'm getting my nutrition. But like that kind of reductionist way of looking at food isn't, it's, it doesn't speak to the, the idea that food is information for the body. In other words, if you eat uh, a cup of spinach, all of the phytochemicals in the spinach, it's not just the iron, it's not just the mm -hmm. you know, calcium, it's, calcium. It's, 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 it's all of that stuff that's in the spinach that is having effect on your genome and having effect on your DNA. You know, they're bathing your cells in all kinds of um, nutrients that either actually exacerbate uh, problems with the DNA or, or, or seek to um, you know, make, make it a better environment in the cells. Right. Um, There's a lot of synergy there. It's not just like one element, like taking a, a vitamin C pill is not the same as eating an orange or, you know, there's so many other benefits, not just that one vitamin. So, exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. Um, we had somebody ask about tremors. I know that's very, very uh, common in the community. A lot of patients, have really severe tremors and cramps. Was that something that you personally experienced? Um, not, I have not experienced tremors really. Um, mm -hmm. Cramping, yes. Um, and, you know, so I can speak to cramping a little more than tremors. I don't mm -hmm. know 
specifically, and again, I'm, I, I just, you know, of course I'm not a nutritionist. I don't, I'm, uh, you know, but, and again, that the, the idea that you can take this one nutrient and then no longer have tremors. I don't know. Again, it's, it's this really integrated holistic kind right. of idea that you want to, you want to, and, and then try. But I will say that, you know, things like electrolytes, various electrolytes, like potassium and magnesium and sodium um, that you can like add these electrolytes to your water or mm. um, avocados or uh, bananas, those sorts of things can definitely help, potentially help. But again, if you're eating a, you know, a bowl of ice cream and having like Captain Crunch cereal for breakfast, and then you have, you know, you have a banana with it, don't expect your your cramping to like disappear, right? So it's, yeah. Okay. Um, we have another question here from Amanda. Uh, she's a breast cancer survivor and very hesitant to embrace the paleo type diet that is heavy in animal meats. That um, mm -hmm. there's been some studies she said in China which links cancer to animal based diets. Um, what's your advice on that? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Um, first of all, Paleo diets, I think, I think they can be misinterpreted sometimes to be like super meat heavy. And I think that most people that they use paleo diets for healing um, use meat fairly sparingly because you're right, it does like increase the mTOR pathways and various other things that can be carcinogenic. Now, the type of meat you, you, um, that you, uh, that you choose again, as I talked about, the grass-fed, grass-finished beef is a very different kind of thing uh, for the body. But even that, you know, again, if you don't feel comfortable with it, that's fine. Don't, don't, uh, you know, don't do it. Um, I would say the, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. So avoid the meats if that's most comfortable for you, or at least slow down on the meats. Um, and then, uh, you know, add in fermented vegetables. Um, you know, there was just, there was a study I saw recently. It was, I, I saw it recently, but it was like in 2005 where they, the, all these Polish women um, were coming to the United States and getting breast cancer where they didn't get them in when they were in Poland. They were eating like 30 pounds of sauerkraut a year in Poland and like less than 10 pounds a year in the United States. When they came here, they changed their diet and they started getting all this breast cancer. So um, that's uh, and, and another, actually speaking of breast cancer, uh, there was a study out of the University of Southern California where, uh, where they were looking at intermittent fasting. So in other words, where you say you finish eating at night at like five or six o'clock, and then you don't eat again the next day until maybe 10 in the morning, something like that. At Dr. Longo, right? He's done a lot of studies on telomeres and longevity connected to fasting. Um, sure. uh, doctor, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's been like, you know, because our body requires energy to digest food. So if we give our body the whole concept of if we allow our bodies to have more space and time in between those meals, then we can kind of, um, you know, our bodies aren't overworking to constantly be digesting and, right? It's and, and even more importantly, the detoxification of the, it, it, see, one, once you feed the body, then it has to do all this work and the mitochondria have to work in order to create energy. And that produces a waste product called free radicals. And those free radicals, mm -hmm. if they're not eliminated from the body, or at least uh, if, they, if you just keep eating, keep eating, they never, the body never has a chance to detoxify those free radicals and those build up and they actually have an impact on the DNA and they can literally switch DNA, uh, switch, switch a gene from the off position into the on position if you build up the free radicals too much. So like giving the body a chance to uh, time every day, every night to basically just clean up and clean up the dead cells and uh, clean up the free, free radicals, um, then this study out of Southern California, there was, I'm trying to remember now, I think it might've been, it was incredibly, they were looking at breast cancer recurrence and they found that people that the only, where the only therapy was uh, intermittent fasting 
the amount of breast cancer recurrence was like something like 40% less. It was like a statistically huge number that if any pill right. reduced yeah. recurrence of breast cancer by 40%, it would be front page news, right? Yep. Um, but so, but this is just through intermittent, um, intermittent fasting. It doesn't even require that you fast for a long time. No. Yeah. Super easy because it's basically, you stop eating at a, you know, basically as earlier in the evening, you know, like seven, don't eat anything after, you know, a certain time. And then the next morning you wait to have breakfast or you don't have breakfast at all. That's right. And you, have, you know, a cup of coffee or some water or whatever. And then, you know, I do that a lot of times. I, I won't eat anything until noon and a cup of coffee is, you know, keep me, keep yeah. me uh, pretty satisfied. It's not like I'm starving myself. Um, cause that's, this, this is a fine line too, because, you know, we don't want to get to the point where we're fatigued, fatigued and we feel weak and, you know, God forbid we have an injury related to that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, anything that is going to help reduce inflammation, because, you know, the whole thought is inflammation is the cause of all disease, right? It starts in the cells when they're inflamed and that can, you know, become a whole gamut of, of diseases and conditions. So if we could target at that level where it begins, you know, it's going to, it's going to manifest into hopefully reduce symptoms and just preventing all these other comorbidities and, and disease as well. Yep. Um, I think we had a few questions here. Uh, cur um, curcumin supplements? Curcumin. Curcumin. <laughs> that sounds, that makes much more sense. Yeah, curcumin. Curcumin is a, is a derivative of uh, turmeric. Okay. It's like kind of the active ingredient in turmeric. Which, which is, is anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. and it's really good for the uh the lining of the um the arteries okay so for for like sometimes as we age the arteries they become more inelastic right and um uh and curcumin actually helps to create more elasticity within the artery so yeah no it's good stuff yeah someone uh, lisa mentioned she takes turmeric every day yeah um you mentioned some of the oils. Uh, well, this person in particular is talking about CBD oil, which we have done a, an entire webinar on. So um, if you'd like to check that out, go to our hnf-cure.org. I pasted it there in the chat. And we have a, a this this webinar will be uploaded to that page as well in the next two days. Um, but there is there are a lot of webinars on there. One includes um, CBD and cannabis. For, C, uh, for CMT, as well as um, an earlier uh, nutrition webinar that we did that has an actual downloadable uh, guide for foods that are beneficial for the nervous system. So definitely check that out. Um, tofu, somebody had a question about tofu. What's your take on tofu? I mean, I don't eat it very much. If, I mean, occasionally, maybe I'll have some uh, in some miso soup or something like that. Yeah. So, um, but first of all, you have to make sure that you get it uh, organic because soybeans are some of the most, uh, there's they're some of the most chemicals that are used on soybeans than any other uh, plant. Wow. And you would not uh, think that at all. You think you're going for like a healthier option when you go for right. Organic. Yeah. So if you get it like in a in a in a restaurant or something, chances are it's not organic. You know, I I would stay away from it. Mm -hmm. um, and but if it's organic, good quality, um, you know, it's okay. I mean, I think it it has to do. You have to be a little careful about uh, the. Uh, I'm I'm kind of speaking out of my uh, out of my depth here, but there's. There's something that has to do with um, estrogen and the kind of hormonal mm -hmm. situation with tofu and soy that you have to be a little bit mindful of. But I would research that because I'm not quite sure. The soy products like the, um, the miso or a natto or something like that, which are fermented, are probably better, at least for most people that can, that like fermented is good for a lot of people. And it's good for your microbiome. It's good for your gut really good. Um, but if somebody has like a histamine intolerance or something like that, then you, you, you might not want to do those things. So again, everything is re really like, is, is unique. And that's one of the things about functional medicine is, uh, 
you know, it really is individualized medicine. So yeah. every person. Uh, right. Um, Peggy had a question regarding caffeine. What's, what's its effect on inflammation? Does it increase inflammation in the body? Um, that's a good question. I, I, I don't think that it's a big problem unless you overdo it. And then it's maybe more of a neurological because it's such a, a strong stimulant. The jitters and mm -hmm. and if you're also adding like a ton of syrup and sugar in your coffee and creamer and all that dairy. Well, so, that's a whole nother animal. So yeah. so yeah, if you're if you're getting like one of these like almond latte da da da, da at Starbucks. Cream and caramel, yeah. yeah. But but as far as like a cup of coffee or caffeine in general, I don't actually, I think it's fine. Um, you know, green tea is actually really great, um, especially for liver and liver detox. Like, um, so yeah, I mean, as long as you can kind of like, I don't think it uh, impacts infl uh, inflammation in the body. But again, don't take my word for it. Like research it yourself if you- And we do, we do discuss caffeine in that, uh the first webinar we did uh, two years ago. So if you check that out, we, we do discuss caffeine and coffee. Um, and then as far as like sleep, I know a lot of people struggle with sleep. Um, what are some of the beneficial foods or, or lifestyle changes we can do to get better sleep? And how important is it to our you know nervous system and our, our health? Um, yeah, it's critical, of course. Um, now, I would say a few things. Number one, not eating so close to bed. That's a good one. And it's been, you know, thinking about eating as early as possible um, and not trying not to snack right before you go to bed. Cause, cause then your body has to process all that food when it should be actually trying to eliminate, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So when we talked before about the cellular de detoxification, it needs that rest and di we call it rest and digest. So we're just like, it, it's it's we're digesting we're eliminating and if your body is still processing a lot of food from eating right before bed then you get um you can not only disrupt your sleep but also cause toxic kind of build up in your body which leads to disease frankly mm -hmm. um and uh what else you know i mean just your sleep environment is uh, mm -hmm. something to consider for sure yeah um, I know you mentioned on, on a pr um, prior conversation that we had the, you know, just the notion of actual exercise and sweating and how that helps detoxify the body. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So, you know, we are, so there was just a study recently where they um, looked at the umbilical cord blood of babies, newborn babies, and they found 282 um, exogenous toxic chemicals, over 200 of them were neurotoxins that include like Teflon or flame retardant or uh, glyphosate from, I mean, we come into the world, into a toxic world. There have been like over 80,000 chemicals that have been introduced into our environment in the last hundred years, most of which have not been tested. So we are doing this great experiment on the human body and we are absorbing so many toxic chemicals that we, our bodies have never experienced before in the history of our evolution. And we wonder why there's so much cancer and so much autism and ADHD and all this stuff, right? It's like, mm -hmm. these things don't happen out of the blue. They happen because of the environment that we're in. Right. And so exercise is an absolutely um, essential way, also sauna, is another good way to do yeah, it. Yeah, someone was actually asking about sauna and the detox. Yeah, so I mean, the, the, they've been doing studies recently, like a lot of really good studies showing that the, the cardiovascular system is enhanced almost to the same level or maybe to the same level as with exercise. So by experiencing high heat conditions for, now not everybody can tolerate high heat conditions. So you have to kind of see, but if you can, that's a great way to, not only detoxify, get, get some of these 80,000 chemicals moving out of your body because you can only pee or poo them out so much, right? So, right. Um, and, uh, but you get, you get them out through your skin too, you know? 
Yeah, and on that note, um, I'll also mention that we have just launched a platform called movementismedicine.com. I put it in there in the in the chat. Um, and what we're doing there, you know, we want to help. I know we know as CMT patients that it's very challenging to get your heart rate up without risking injury and things along that line. So we've kind of created this platform um, and we offer free virtual adaptive exercise classes. And one of those classes is, is this a seated cardio class. So you don't necessarily need to be able to, you know, have to run around to get a good cardio workout. And I know you mentioned earlier, Paul, um, about breathing exercises. And I'm sure this is a name that you already know, Wim Hof method. Um, which is like really intense breathing. And it, it you, you definitely check it out of YouTube. He's all over YouTube. He actually has an app. Um, and you know, there's the, the breathing is, is so beneficial, especially now in like COVID age where we're all trying to be proactive with our lungs and our breathing. And there is the connection between CMT and the respiratory um, function and diaphragm. So it's really important even if you know it's winter like it is here and you don't can't really get out as much to to practice these breathing exercises you know before bed or in the morning it really helps to kind of just cleanse the body and i know myself like i will literally feel tingling in my fingers like my whole body will get warm from these um, from these exercises and it it helps circulation right because that's another issue that we have loss of, of feeling circulation um, so yeah, check, check that out as well. All right. So I think we are running out of time. We're getting so many great questions. Um, but I do encourage you to check out Paul's websites. Uh, they're pasted at the very, very top of the chat window box. So that's paulfowler.health and also blue low. Can you pronounce that for me? Sure. Blue Lotus Thai. Well, blue, let's see. It was all but jumbled together. Yeah. Blue Lotus Thai.com. Um, we are so, so grateful that you took the time to speak with us today and share your story. Um, I'm sure you will become a mentor for a lot of people, just like um, Terry Walls was a, a mentor for you. So I, I encourage you guys to, you know, reach out to Paul with any other questions. He offers many other services one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and I think you said, you said you had a special offer for CMT patients as well. Yeah. I mean, I do, um, I do individual coaching sessions okay. and, uh, I, there's a package of four that I'll do. One's 90 minute, the others are 50 minutes and I'm doing them half price for people in the uh, HNF community. Awesome. Um, and um, so yeah, just uh, hit me up and just send me an email or something and we'll, we'll get it set up. If, you know, this is a lot to navigate, right? So, so as easy as it is to say, just eat on the outer edges of the grocery store and da da da, still you might be like, well, you know, should I do a whole 30 diet? Should I try the walls protocol? And if I do that, what do I have to set up in my kitchen to do it? Like the idea of the coach is to just, is not necessarily to tell you what to do, but to give you support. So, and, and figure out together as a team to mm -hmm. figure out like what works for you and how you can ne negotiate and navigate these challenging situations. And then if you, if, if it's okay, uh, Estelle, one more thing yeah, no. is that, um, I just want to say like the, the, the work that you like a lot, I, I notice a lot of in the CMT community that people are a little bit, can be a little bit like not so hip on, on nutrition as being important because it's like, oh, I have this genetic condition and the nutrition is not going to affect the genes. It's the genes are the genes and there's nothing I can do. But the idea is that, okay, that may be true. But like you might also might have pre-diabetes. You might also have like some sort of dysbiosis or some sort of gut kind of uh, issue that's causing mm -hmm. inflammation in your body. And so if you can clean up all of that other stuff, then, then your body has more power, first of all, to, to kind of like deal with the CMT right. and then the things that go on with that. And, and just, it, it just the brain fog might lift a little bit or various mm -hmm. other kinds of things that give you more energy. And so I just want to like say, you know, it's, uh, I just want to like offer you encouragement to, you know, to try different things, to be curious, to make some efforts and, um, 
you know, if, if there is a way that I can help, I'm absolutely honored to do it. Right. Yeah. I love that. And it's, you know, it's good to have somebody in your life that can help you be accountable, right? Because it can be really lonely if we have to kind of handle this on our own. So like you said, finding mentors, even if it's that like, you know, on social media, who are we following on social media? Are we following a bunch of, you know, like Kim Kardashians or are we following people who are like, you know, healthy and, uh, you know, have these healthy lifestyles and can, we can learn from. So I think that's part of it as well. Cause we also live in a virtual world where we choose to surround ourselves with different influencers. So it's good to kind of uh, do inventory of, of who those people are as well. Yeah. And there's, there's one more person, uh, that I follow, I listen to his podcast all the time and I find him to be really great with all this stuff. His name's Dr. Mark Hyman. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. And his podcast is called The Doctor's Pharmacy with F-A-R-M, like farm. Uh, okay. And it's, it's a, he's a functional medicine doctor. So if you wanna learn about Dr. Hyman uh, and, and his approach and, and the functional medicine approach and food as medicine, mm -hmm. uh, it's a really great podcast. So that, that's a good place to start. Yep, and then last note, <laughs> I promise, on March 7th, we're gonna be uh, hosting, h &E is gonna be hosting a virtual CMT summit. Uh, last year, we did this in person in Phoenix, obviously, because of COVID, we have to do this one virtual, um, but we do hope the fall one will be in person. But uh, the virtual event, if you go to movementismedicine.com, you'll see an ad there, it's completely free. It's a whole morning and afternoon of, um, you know, lectures and adaptive exercise classes, all from um, CMT specialists and physical therapists as well. So um, there's a lot of resources out there and we're doing our best to connect them to everyone in our community. Um, we're all patients, so we know how important this is. Um, and with that, we will let everyone enjoy their evenings. Um, again, this will be up on our YouTube channel and uh, we look forward to hearing your feedback and getting some questions. So, all right. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. Have a good night. Thank you.